All right, good morning. <laughs> we had to run a makeshift live stream. Um, our technician is not here today. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start. We're now running a few minutes late. So I'm going to jump into the lesson for the sake of time this morning. Um, if we have time at the end. Um, actually, what I'd like to start doing is before class, submitting prayer lists on a card or a piece of paper, and that would be more efficient, I think, than just everybody raising hands. Um, I can read through that a little quicker, and we can get get on to the, uh, to the lesson faster because of the confines of time. Speaking of the confines of time, tonight, today's lesson is, I believe, pretty important to what's going on in the world right now. So if you can't hear where I'm asking you to turn, go back and reference the video online. If you have trouble doing that, just jot down the verses that we're going to go to because I'm going to need you to listen fast this morning. Listen fast for the confines of time. That's right. You should listen fast. We need to sharpen our minds. You know, that's what we need to do is sharpen them. Iron sharpeneth iron, right? And that's what we need to do this morning because, you know what? The day is coming and the time is coming and I believe the time is almost at hand. So we have work to do. We've got to stay sharp, you know, and I'll tell you, most of the people that I work for that live well up into their 90s, every one of them will say the same thing. You have to keep moving and you have to keep your mind sharp. If you do not do those things, you will rust both areas, your mind and your body. So we need to stay sharp and hopefully this morning, uh, for the sake of time, I can get through what I believe needs to be uh, said this morning. Um, boy, I'll tell you, uh, last Wednesday night, I was severely dehydrated while I preached. That was the first time I actually felt weak behind a pulpit, but it was 103 degrees all day while I was working, and I didn't, I don't believe I was able to keep up with my hydration. And then uh, Wednesday night, I was, I was somewhat lethargic, to say the least. But hopefully you got a blessing out of that study. We'll continue that study on Wednesday night as well. But I'd like for you this morning to turn to Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12. I'm going to be reading quite a few verses this morning before we begin because I believe these verses will lay the groundwork for what we need to know. Hopefully I was able to get the online working in real time stream. I believe I do. And um, if not, we are recording, so it will end up on YouTube later, if we did not. Romans chapter 12 and 13 are two very interesting chapters in the entire Bible. But we're going to begin our reading in verse number 9. <clears throat> Romans 12, 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. I'm going to continue into chapter number 13 because this is going to set the stage for this morning's lesson. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. 
And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt then thou not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also. For they are ministers attending continually upon this very thing. <clears throat> Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is brief, briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask that it would be your words this morning and not mine. Lord, I believe this is the message you gave me this morning to prepare the hearts of God's people. Lord, we have a job to do, and Lord, I, I take responsibility for the failures that I've committed, Lord, and I just ask that you would help us to see the problem and be able to address it. Lord, I ask now that your Holy Spirit would move. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Like I said before in the beginning, due to the confines of time, I want everybody, if you do not hear the place, just pay attention because I'm not going to read anything out of contest. I'm not inserting my own opinion. I'm going to use a lot of Bible to back up the two doctrines or three that I'm going to talk about this morning. First off, I want you to realize that our nation was and is founded on the Word of God. There are laws in this book that this nation is and was founded on. Just like the nation of Israel was founded on the word of God. Just like the nation of Israel. I want you to notice something though. The nation of Israel throughout your entire Bible walked away from God continually. So they're going to be our example at a certain part this morning. You know, I don't believe in all laws. Let me throw this disclaimer out there. I don't believe that every law is constitutional and every law is of God. I believe God's law is the final authority. The Bible says blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And I believe that laws that are set up that destroy the fabric of our society and destroy people and kill people like abortion, I believe those laws are wrong laws and should not be obeyed. But there's a time, a place, and a way to handle that. And it's not jumping into the streets destroying people's personal property. I'm going to say that. You're going to hear more on that tonight. Or today, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I don't believe in gay rights. I do not believe in gay rights. I believe in human rights. You know, when we start isolating and giving people special rights, their rights supersede the rights of everyone else. And then all of a sudden, if you say anything against them, then you're the one that's doing the wrong. But let me tell you something today. I believe in human rights. Everybody has a right given by God. That's what our Constitution was founded on. We the people. We the people. We are given our rights and our freedoms, not of the government, but of God. 
And that's what we need to remember. We're not a democracy. We are a constitutional republic with checks and balances. The executive branch, the legislative branch, and the judicial branches of government. We are the only nation on the planet that is a constitutional republic. We are not a democracy. We do not let the mob rule. Although I feel like many of the mobs today are starting to rule our nation, do you not? I see it clearly. It, I don't even watch TV. I just hear about the, the insanity that's going on. All I've heard about is all the rioting. What happened to coronavirus? Where did that thing go? All we're doing is paying attention to a bunch of rioting. And, and you know, it's like the news. They had one horse, and that horse starts to fade, so they got to jump on another hobby horse, right? And that one's all the rioting. And they're just making it worse. We need to quit talking about them. We need to go in there and do something to help them. Christians ought to be up in arms with their Bible going in there and giving the gospel and preaching to many of these people. That's what needs to be done. You know what? I don't believe in God. I don't believe in pro-choice. I believe in God's plan, which is life is sacred. Life is sacred. I don't believe we should support evil, but good. That being said, we should follow all the laws until those laws break God's law. We do need the government for certain things, but not everything. The government was set up according to God's law to execute judgment upon those who break the law that hurt others and kill others. The title of my lesson this morning is Heading for Disaster. We are heading as a nation for utter ruin and disaster. If America doesn't wake up, like I read, awake to righteousness in Romans chapter number 13, awake out of your sleep, if we don't wake up, America's done. It's done. If, if it's already not started, if the cancer has not already spread too far, then we're going to lose this nation if we haven't already. Number one, number one point this morning is we need order. We need order. We do not need a new world order, but we need order in our society. God has ordained a few things. God has ordained marriage, ordained marriage. And marriage is the union between one man and one woman, not one man and a thousand women, not one man and another man, not a woman and a woman. That is not a marriage. Let's get that clear. God has ordained the sanctity of marriage. God has ordained the home. The home is ordained of God. It is important for us to have children and rear them up. And if there are people that cannot have children, it's important that you understand that maybe there are people in your family that do need your help raising their children or helping or being an assistant or adoption or many different things. Hey, if you're not able to bear children this morning or you've done raised your kids and they're gone, help someone else who's in trouble. What's the Bible say? Ye older women, help the younger. Right? That's what it says in uh, the book of Timothy and in the book of Titus. Second is the church. And we can tell that many of the churches are starting to fall by the wayside. And because of that, the fourth government is starting to fall. Our government is starting to fall. Our United I don't know if you've noticed, but I believe our United States government is starting to deteriorate. One brick at a time, it didn't happen overnight. If the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? What are we going to do? They've plucked out the chief cornerstone, which is Jesus Christ. They took him out of the school. They took him out of the home. They've taken him out of everything, the government. They're taking him out. And if that foundation of Jesus Christ, the true and tried precious stone, if he's removed, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We need an order. We need order. Paul 
even under Roman dictatorship, and what would be the sixth empire, world empire. He even understood that even though that empire was wrong in many ways, and it was idolatrous, wicked as hell, and just did whatever they wanted, he also knew that there was some good by restoring and keeping order in the streets. And like I said, Paul probably did not disagree or agree with everything the Roman Empire did. How could you? It was a wicked, Christless, godless empire. Like the five before it. And like the seventh that's coming. The seventh empire will be Christless and godless. So in verse number 13, or I'm sorry, in Revelation, or for Revelation, I've been in Revelation a lot. Romans cha uh, chapter 13, verse number 11. I want to focus this morning quickly. <clears throat> and knowing, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we, be, need, uh, than we believe. Here's what we need to understand. It's time Christian America woke up. It's time to wake up. You can't just ride the coattails of the generations before you that, that worked hard. See, I already read, don't be slothful in business. I read, don't render evil for evil. I read, hey, the golden rule, which is many of those from the World War II generation, they kept those laws. Even though many probably weren't safe, the truth is they just did that which was right, and there was a blessing just in doing right. If you just do what's right, there's going to be a blessing from God, right? Even the heathen, when they do right, God does doesn't pass judgment right away. We need to remember that. And guess what? The appearing of Jesus is right around the corner, so then we need to really wake up. Why? Because Jesus could be coming. And what we need to realize is, are you going to be ashamed at his coming? Or are you going to greet him with open arms? Are you going to fly into heaven with your head hanging low to meet him? Or are you going to go up Arms open wide saying, I was fighting the whole time, Lord, and I'm happy to see you. I know I was a sinner. I battled all the sin. I'm battling right till you grab me. But thank God you're here to take me away because I'm tired of fighting. But make no mistake, I'm still fighting every day. Paul said, I've fought a good warfare. I've run the course. I've fought a good fight. You're in a fight. And we're in the fight of our lives, America, today. The fight of our life. We're going to lose this nation. I'm letting you know I'm not a prophet. I'm not a seer. All I can see is the writing on the wall. Just like Daniel did. The balances are set. The judgments pass. This nation has already been divided. Now it's going to be scattered and destroyed. And someone else is going to come in and rule this country. Because we all know God isn't right now. <clears throat> Verse 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Why? Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We need to put on the armor in Ephesians 6, 12 through verse 20. We're not turning there. Write it down. Read it on your own time. But here's the thing. Nobody is putting on the armor anymore to do battle. Nobody is fighting anymore. The Christians have hung up their Bibles. They've hung up their sword. They've taken off their war plates. They've done everything but fight. And we need to wake up this morning. Welcome to Sunday school. It's about time we learn something out of God's word today. Verse number 13, let us walk honestly as in the day. Honestly, honesty. You know, honesty is refreshing even if it's hard. You know what? Honesty is good. When you go to the doctor and something's wrong with you, do you want them to lie to you? No, you don't have cancer. Just go on your merry way. Next thing you know, you've lost 100 pounds and you're laying in a bed somewhere and you're gasping for air when there's something that could have been done a year ago. Right? You want to hear the truth. And I'm telling you right now, America has a cancer. Let's be honest with ourselves, America. It's time to wake up. Time to wake up. <clears throat> Not in rioting and drunkenness. 
Boy, I'll tell you what, we've seen a lot of that, right? I, I've only heard about it on the news because I don't watch it, but who watches the news? Probably everybody in here. And I'll tell you right now, you'd have to have turned a blind eye not to see the rioting. And you know what is a common denominator? My cousin told me on the phone, many of them are lobbing their beer bottles at the police. Why? Because it's in the night and they're drunk and they're starting to riot and they're wicked and they're destroying things. And that's not God's will. That's why we have to have order. That's why we we have to have a police force. Look, I disagree with what happened. George Floyd was murdered. I don't care what anybody says, that was murder. And Romans 13 says, thou shalt not commit adultery and thou shalt not kill. And that man was killed. He was murdered. Look, I'll tell you right now, there ain't a man on this planet, if he wasn't in handcuffs, I could not take him down. Why do you have to put your knee in somebody's carotid artery to prove a point? He should be tried and put to death, I believe, for murder in the first degree. Not only because he killed someone, but he used his power to abuse it. To abuse it. Oh, I can't believe you're saying that. Look, if ye shed men's blood, by men's blood shall your blood be shed. That's in the book of Genesis. That is what we need to remember. Oh, you're preaching too hard. You know, oh, you shouldn't say these things. Let me tell you something. Because this man was murdered, and make no mistake, that's murder. I've heard enough. I've seen enough. It's murder. Murder in the first degree. Period. Period. Verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to the, fulfill the lusts thereof. You know what? Now what's taking place is lust. Well, how is lust taking place in rioting? Do you really think, do you really think you're going to get your point across by ravaging a Target store, by running in and looting all these businesses owned by people that the Bible says were not slothful in business in Romans chapter 12? And it says to love your neighbor, that's fulfilling the law and that's doing the right thing. Thing. The Bible says in Romans 10, the man who lives by him and does them. You need to be careful today. You know what? If you do what's right, that's a law in and of itself. That doesn't earn you salvation. But let me tell you something. By following the Ten Commandments, you're less likely to have some of the more serious things happen to you and judgments of God be passed down upon you. Trust me, I've seen it. Unsaved people, you say, well, how can that person, they're so good. Yeah, many of them are and they've lived a blessed life. It doesn't get them to heaven. But let me tell you something. You want to know why they're blessed? Because they just did that which was right. And the Christian should take note of that. How much more as a child of God, if we do the right thing, will our blessing be? But we just squander it. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul says, God forbid in chapter 6. God forbid. We need to awake unto righteousness. It's high time. The night is far spent. It's over. We've got to do something. So we need to get right in our own life. Turn in your Bibles to Jude, the little book of Jude, which is right before the book of Revelation. Jude, the book of Jude, right before the book of Revelation. <clears throat> verse number five. Jude, verse five. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved an everlasting change unto darkness, unto the judgment of that great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, just like these, just like those that rejected God's law, guess what? The Bible says also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. A dignity is somebody over you. Dominion is somebody leading you. They despise it. But it doesn't take long to realize why. They despise their parents. They despise the church. No wonder they despise the government, right? Look, here's the thing. 
We should have already known what's coming because we've allowed our churches to collapse. Because we're not doing anything to fight back. Nothing. Not a thing. <clears throat> now here's the example. Verse 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. This durst not bring a, against him a railing accusation. D hey, look, Michael could have said, Hey, devil, you're wicked. You're going to hell. Hey, devil, I can take you. I'm stronger than you. I'm the archangel. But he didn't join the fight. He didn't render evil for evil. He didn't bring a railing accusation. What did he do? He says, The Lord rebuked thee. What's he saying? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will recompense. He let God fight the battle. He did the right thing. He stepped aside as an obedient servant of God. And he said, hey, you know what? I'm going to let God take you out, devil. God's going to hide Moses' body so that Israel can't worship him. I'm going to let them do it because God will do a better job than I can. And that is also a lesson we need to learn. We need to be careful. Hey, stand up if they're coming to take your freedoms. Stand up if they're coming to take your rights. Stand up if they're coming to take your freedom of speech and religion. Stand up if they're coming to take your guns. But listen, when it's just your brother against you, stand down. It's better to take the wrong. It's better to turn the other cheek. Why? So he can get saved. That's the example. Verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But they know naturally as brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. They corrupt themselves. Why? They don't know. Why? Because if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Gospel's been hidden for far too long. You know, I used to sing songs in junior church, hide it under a bushel, no. I'm going to let it shine, my light. Let your light therefore shine before men, that they can praise your heavenly Father. Where's our light? We are the light. We should be. We're like that light that's going dim because the battery's dying. That's what kind of light we've become as Christians. 2 Peter chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2. I want you to notice God's not a respecter of persons in judgment. So we don't need to be a respecter of persons. We need to be really careful, right, in how we discern and judge because God is just going to flat out judge wickedness. For the sake of time, I'm not going to read the first seven, uh, seven ver or first seven verses because it would just be regurgitating what the book of Jude said. Starting, well, I will read verse 7. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Wasn't against the government, the city of Sodom? Oh, you were allowed to be a homo. This is no big deal. What unlawful deed? God's law. God's law is the supreme law. Verse 9, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Don't you worry about being judged, jury, and executioner? It's not your job to go deliver justice. It's your job to defend your home and your family, though. Don't get the two mixed up. Verse 10, But chiefly them that walk after the flesh, the lust of uncleanliness, and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. Do you really think they're rioting and tearing up stores and stealing televisions because they're trying to save George Floyd's name and reputation? No, they're self-willed. They're covetous. They're stealing. They needed an excuse to steal. They've been caged up from coronavirus for far too long, and I think it's gotten to their head. They've lost their mind. They understand not. Instead of reading the Bible, instead of us getting the gospel out, instead of us doing what we're supposed to do, talking to them on the phone about what we read in God's word, what are we doing? We're just, hmm, huh. Sure is a shame what's going on. Coronavirus is scared to death. Put on a mask so I can breathe in my own carbon dioxide and destroy my own antibodies. Here, let me just put a bunch of hand sanitizer so it can go through my porous organ, the largest one in my body, so it can seep in and kill out the real things that will prevent against disease as these things strike through and kill the real antibodies that your body developed over your lifetime you're being lied to by the scamdemic because how do you know well they quit talking about it talking about this 
And when the hurricanes come, guess what they're going to talk about? They're going to quit talking about the riots. And they're going to talk about the storms. And when the storms are gone, they're going to quit talking about the storms and they're going to talk about the earthquakes. And when the earthquakes are gone, they're going to go back to coronavirus 20 or 30 or whatever they make up to scare you. And then when they're done with that, they're going to talk about wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. It's going to say, ooh, ooh, ooh. the more things change, the more they stay the same. And everybody just is glued to their television like a child. What do you do to children? You sit them in front of the TV to watch cartoons. And that's all we're watching today is cartoons. It's a comedy. It's a joke. It's all you're watching. You might as well be watching Spongebob. There's more entertainment than that. <clears throat> self-willed. They're stealing. It's wicked. Presumptuous are they. Self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. I've never seen more disrespect for the leadership in our country. Look, some of them deserve it, but the truth of the matter is, you just get rid of them. You don't let them get into their positions. Nancy Pelosi should have been gone decades ago, before her 35th facelift. She should have been gone! Now she just looks weird as she's eating her ice cream. Weirdo! But these, as natural brute beasts, verse 12, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Look, they're just going to destroy themselves. They're destroying their own communities with their own people. What? 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 People in their own community that have saved a lifetime to open a business, and they're tearing it down. Tearing down their own people's business. Verse 13, And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Let's look at some examples of the lawless getting judged. Turn to Psalm chapter 92. Psalm 92. Psalm 92. Doesn't matter if you're black, white, yellow, orange, green, polka dot. It doesn't matter. We're all the children of God. That's why the Bible, well, not the Bible, but that's what, it, I, who remembers this song? Jesus loves the little children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Come on. We don't love anymore. Why? Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We've gotten way too cold. Psalm 92. Psalm 92. Verse number 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and the faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the work of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy word, works, and thy thoughts are very deep. Look, we need to stay in the word of God. The Christian needs to stay there. Why? Because if you're staying in the Word of God, you're less likely to go off and do something really stupid. I can assure you that because I used to do a lot of stupid things until I got in the Word of God. I still do stupid things, but not as many as I did before. Just kind of cut it down. Why? Because I'm a human. We're going to do stupid things. Just ask my wife. She'll tell you all about it. I do stupid things nonstop. I walk around the house. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing half the time. What are you doing? Talking to yourself again? Yeah, sure I am. No one else wants to talk to me. Verse number six. A brutish man. Brutish is like a beast, like a natural known beast. Look up the word yourself on your own time. A brutish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. When the wicked spring is the grass, and when the workers of iniquity do flourish, it, shall, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. Lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. What does that mean? Let God deal with them. They're there. They're always going to be there. We're always going to have fights that we're going to be in. But let me tell you something. First five verses, God's good. The next couple, let's see if it comes true. Let's see if God is a man of his word. The Bible says, let God be true and every man found a liar. Let God be true. Turn to Isaiah chapter 5. 
Isaiah chapter 5. Told you I got to talk fast. So you got to listen fast. I guess you can replay this lesson in slow motion later. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah 5, verse number 18. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with the cords of vanity, and sin, as it were, a, with a cart rope. Iniquity, unbalanced, unequity. They're drawing out the unequitable behavior in the streets right now. They're destroying our nation. They're tipping the scales of justice. They're taking it into their own hands, but not for any reason other than their own lust. It's their lust that they're doing. Why? Because as you're watching televisions fly out of the department stores that are being looted, what, do you think that George Floyd wanted that? Oh, no, he'd want to be back living again and saying, maybe I should have quit drinking. Maybe I shouldn't have passed off a counterfeit $20 bill. Maybe, maybe I should have done things a little differently. Don't steal. That's what I was doing. And it cost me my life. Let's say, let him make speed and hasten his work that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come that we may know it. Hey, you are not going to force the judgment of God. God's going to come when he's going to come. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. These rioters are getting drunk. They're right in their own eyes. They're tearing up their own communities. They are fools. Fools. They are not wise. They think they're actually doing a good thing. They think they're standing up for what is right. But they are calling evil good and good evil. Look, it was murder what happened to that guy. Murder, period. But it's not the job of us to go against it. Let's let the court system figure it out. You know, I already know that the FBI has been involved. This guy's going to either spend the rest of his life in prison or he's going to get the death penalty. But let me tell you what, his wife has already left him, filed for divorce. See, when you do something wrong, you may not get judged right away, but you can get judged here on earth, just like that. Be careful what you do, because you may not face God's judgment right away, but you can face judgment here on earth. Christians for far too long have said, oh, it's under the blood, under the blood, under the blood. Hey, be careful what blood you're trodden underfoot. Because to me, that's precious blood. That's the blood that cleansed me from all unrighteousness. Be careful. Don't take it for granted. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Be not deceived. For God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he'll also reap. Right? Verse 23, which justify the wicked for reward. They're justifying their deeds and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth, devoureth the stubble and the flame consumeth the chafe, so their root shall be as rottenness and their bosom shall go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Hey, pay attention to God's law, America. We're starting to throw it away. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Therefore, verse 25, is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people. And he has stretched forth his hand against them and has smitten them and the hills did tremble and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets for all his anger is turned not away get this but his hand is stretched out still repent of it turn from it get away from it God's hand is there ready to pull you up out of the mire getting ready to pull you up out of the wickedness of sin don't just sit there and say I don't know what else to do get a hold of God today Get a hold of him. Turn to Jeremiah chapter number 8. Jeremiah chapter number 8. I've got to put my clock on here because it's I get five, eight minutes. <clears throat> eight minutes. Verse number 8 of Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 8. How do you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly, in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. Oh, 
God didn't really mean what he said. Oh, excuse me, I think he did. Or he wouldn't have taken the time and care to put it in his word. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord, and what wisdom is in them? Therefore will I give their wives unto others. Hey, police officer, your wife is going to remarry probably. It's a judgment of God, right? It's what it says. How many times has someone committed adultery? Has somebody done something wrong, abused a wife physically, and now she's the wife of another? How many times has that happened? Oh, too many to name here in America, right? And their fields to them that shall inherit them. Well, you ever heard of alimony? Police officer, if you're even allowed to live and make 10 cents a day making license plates in the penitentiary, all your substance is going to go to her. She's going to get everything. Hey, Jeff Bizios, how much did your wife get, you whoremonger? She got half and deserved more. Listen, for everyone, uh, for, for everyone from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness or wantonness or lasciviousness. For the prophet, even to the priest, everyone dealeth, dealeth falsely. That's what we see in America today. For they have held the hurt of thy daughter and my people slightly saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall in the time of their visitation. They shall be cast down, saith the Lord. I have to hurry. Flip to chapter number 9, verse number 21. Next chapter in your Bible. Verse number 21 of chapter number 9 of Jeremiah. The Bible reads, For death has come up into our windows and is entered in into our palaces to cut off the children from without and the young men from the streets. Hmm. See a lot of young men running the streets, don't we? Not being raised. I'll tell you what, there was a time even in the black community that the fathers would come out and whip the fire out of their kids for this kind of behavior. And I'll tell you what, there needs to be some more fire whipping. That goes for white people, black people, red people, you name the people. There needs to be some whippings being delivered, but you can't say that anymore, can you? That's not politically correct. Put them in time out. That's called prison, and it doesn't work. Penitentiary. You know where that term comes from? Penitence. It was designed to make people penitent, to forget and be forgiven of their crimes and to get a new start on life. But what we've turned these penitentiaries into is money-grabbing organizations that just constantly feed off of the taxpayers. And then they're letting them out early because of COVID-19. Speak thus, saith the Lord, even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field and as the handful after the harvestmen and none shall gather them. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, nor the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, God. Know with me that I am the Lord which exerciseth loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For these things I delight, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will punish all them which are uncircumcised with the which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. Goes on to say that many are uncircumcised in heart. I didn't get to my third point, so I didn't talk fast enough, I guess. The truth of the matter is, on your own time, read Romans 12 and 13, the parts about loving others as yourself and doing that which is right. Because here's the thing, we're going to overcome good with kindness. I mean, overcome evil with kindness. We really will. So as a nation, we need to extend an arm, the arm of the gospel, to get people saved. It's the only way we can stem this time, tide. We need to stop it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that it be your words, Lord, that touch our hearts, not opinions, but the word of God that came through this morning. Lord, I wish I had two hours to talk on this. I don't know if people would listen that long, but Lord, your word is chop full on how to fix this, the reasons behind it. So many, they point to what's going wrong in the world, but they don't offer a solution. They think it has to do with restrictions and 
and more laws. But it really has to do with the hidden man of the heart and God's law. Lord, help our leadership in this nation to realize that. In Jesus' name, amen.